Last topic of the unit, nice one to finish off with because it's not that hard compared to a couple of the things that we've done earlier on. I wanted to find another term for you today, the last term of the unit called a satellite. A satellite is anything that orbits around something else and it orbits around something else because of the force of gravity. Now, if it orbits around something else, it experiences a centripetal force. But remember, the centripetal force is always a force that's caused by something else. And in this case, it is caused by gravity. You can have two kinds of satellites. You can have an artificial satellite. You can have a natural satellite. A natural satellite is a satellite like the moon orbiting around the Earth. It's a satellite that we didn't put there. It's just naturally occurring. Something that orbits around something else naturally because of the force of gravity. An artificial satellite is a satellite that we put in orbit around something else. If we have the International Space Station in orbit around the Earth, that would be an artificial satellite of the Earth. The moon would be a natural satellite of the Earth. Now, in both cases, it doesn't really matter whether it's a natural satellite or an artificial satellite, in both cases, we're going to analyze it in the same way. Because there's a centripetal force, as it orbits in more or less a circle around the Earth or around the Sun or whatever it's orbiting around, and that centripetal force is caused by the force of gravity, then we're going to set Fc, the centripetal force, equal to Fg, the gravitational force. Now, the centripetal force, of course, is mv squared over r. The force of gravity, you could say, hold off before you write this down, okay? You could say it's m times g. The problem with this is that you don't know what the value of g is, right? On the surface of the Earth, it's about 9.81 meters per second squared, give or take. But up the International Space Station or even further out, we don't know what the value of g is. Now, you could calculate the value of g using what we've just learned with the producer equation, the experiencer equation for gravitational field. But the alternative to that is rather than saying the force of gravity is m times g, we could say the force of gravity is g m1 m2 over r squared. Then we don't need to calculate the gravitational field strength first. Now, we've got a lot of masses in here, and we've got a lot of r's in here. Let's cancel out some stuff, OK? Let's cancel out r's first. There's an r appears on the left side. There's two of them that appear on the right side, an r squared. So let's cancel that, and let's cancel one of those r's. So that leaves us with m times v squared over just m times v squared, I should say, equals g times m1 times m2 over r. Now, these masses, um, there's some overlap with the masses as well. What does this m stand for on the left-hand side, the centripetal force? The mass of what? If you have, let's say, the International Space Station orbiting around the Earth, what mass is in mv squared over r? Would that be the mass of the space station, the thing that's doing the orbiting? Or would that be the mass of the Earth, the central body that's being orbited around? Yep. Yeah, that would be the mass of the space station. So we're going to call this ms, the mass of the satellite. Now, one of these masses on the right-hand side is also the mass of the satellite. And one of them, one of them is the mass of the central body. I'm going to call it MC. You guys remember what central body means? It's the thing that's being orbited around. So if the Earth is, uh, this, it, it's, sorry, if a, a space station is orbiting around the Earth, the space station is the satellite, the Earth is the central body. If the Earth is orbiting around the Sun, then the Earth is the satellite and the Sun is the central body. So we've got two masses here. We've got the mass of the, the satellite, and we've got the mass of the central body. Now, you can see here that ms, the mass of the satellite, cancels. That means it doesn't matter how heavy the Earth is as it orbits around the sun. What matters is how fast it's going and what the radius is, and the mass of the sun, the sun of course. The International Space Station orbiting around the Earth does not change orbit when they bring a new astronaut up. Okay, this astronaut is heavier than the last astronaut that was on the International Space Station, or we bring supplies up to the International Space Station, it doesn't change the orbit of the space station because the mass of the satellite cancels out of the equation. So what are we left with here? On the left side, we're left with v squared. On the right side, we're left with g times mc, the mass of the central body, divided by r. I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to star this because it does not appear on your data sheet. The reason that it doesn't appear on your data sheet is because you're expected to be able to figure out this equation 
from fc is equal to mv squared over r and fg is equal to g m1 m2 over r squared. Just remember that you're going to cancel out one of the r's and, and you're going to cancel out one of the m's and remember which m it is that you cancel out. Okay, we're left with the mass of the central body versus the mass of the satellite. Two examples, here's the first one. How fast must a communications satellite be moving in order to stay in orbit 1,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth? Uh, a couple of things here. First of all, this is kilometers. And second of all, it's above the surface of the Earth. And you know that when you do anything with something above the Earth, then you don't want the distance above the surface of the Earth. Rather, you want the distance from center of the Earth, right? So we're going to have to add that to the radius of the Earth. How fast must a satellite be moving in order to stay in orbit there? It's a satellite. We're going to say FC is equal to FG. We could say FG is equal to M times G, but I'm not going to do that because we don't know what little g is. This is the mass of the satellite. This is the mass of the satellite's central body. The mass of the satellite cancels, R cancels, and we're left with V squared is equal to G times the mass of the central body over R. Solving for V, we're going to get the square root of G times the mass of the central body over R. 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. What's our central body here? What's our thing being orbited around? You could call it a producer if you wanted, I suppose. The Earth. So let's use the mass of the Earth here. 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. You know what? We've used both numbers, but on our data sheet it says 5.97. Let's be consistent with that, okay? From here on out, let's just say the number on our data sheet for the mass of the Earth is the number we're going to use, 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Now, what's the value of R? Um, 1,000 kilometers? Nope. We want the distance from the center of the Earth. So let's add 1,000 kilometers, which is 1 million meters. 1,000 kilometers is a million meters. Let's add that to the radius of the Earth, which, again, using the number that's on our data sheet, is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. Notice R isn't squared anymore because we had canceled out the square. Now, let's do this on our calculator because this looks a little icky. We're going to say, let's just do what's inside the square root sign first. Let's say 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 times 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Let's press equals. Then let's divide that by one set of brackets on the bottom. Don't say bracket 1 million bracket plus bracket 6.37. Don't do that. Okay, don't skip the brackets. Just say bracket 1 million. Is that right? Get the right number of zeros there? Yep. Bracket 1 million plus 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters. You see what I've done there? To solve that, we get 539, so on, so on, so on. Is that my answer? Jack, what's wrong? Yeah, I forgot to square root it. So let's square root that now. And we do, we get an answer of 7 point, well, 7345, 7346 actually meters per second. But we're going to round that to how many digits? The constant had three. This had three. This had three. This had four. Final answer is going to be how many digits? Three, 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 four. Final answer should be three digits, yeah. So we're actually going to record that to 7.35 times 10 to the 3 meters per second. So this satellite has got to be going about 7,300 meters per second in order to stay in orbit around the Earth at that height. Goes too fast, what's going to happen? It's not necessarily going to fly off. Depends on how fast it's going. It's going to change its orbit. Its, its radius is going to, its orbital radius is going to be bigger. Let's take a look at the last example of the unit, example number eight. It says, what's the mass of a planet has an, that has an artificial satellite revolving around it? By the way, the, art, the fact that it's an artificial satellite, does that make any difference in our analysis? 
natural satellite, artificial satellite, whatever. It just means that we've put it there. Orbiting around it at a speed of 2.39 times 10 to the 4 meters per second has an orbital radius of 7 point, uh, sorry, 9.5 times 10 to the 6 meters. If it says it has an orbital radius here, that means that it's the distance from the center of the planet already. Does that make sense? You don't have to add or subtract the radius of the planet. That is the radius of the planet plus whatever the distance is above the surface. Now, if you get a question like this on a test and you're not sure about that, you can ask me and I'll tell you. I'm not going to tell you whether you have to add or subtract anything, but I'll tell you that that already includes the radius of the planet and the distance above the surface. And then it's up to you to decide whether you've got to add or subtract or none of the above. Okay, in this case, it is what we want from the center of the planet, right? So we're not going to add or subtract anything there. It's a satellite, natural, artificial, doesn't matter. FC is equal to FG. We're going to say MV squared over R, but this is the mass of the satellite, equals G times M times M, mass of the satellite times the mass of the central body, over R squared. Mass of the satellite cancels, one of the R's cancels, we're left with V squared is equal to G times the mass of the central body, over R. What are we looking for here? Mass this time, right? Mass. So let's take the R up by multiplying. It becomes V squared times R is equal to G times the mass of the central body. And then what are we, we're going to get rid of the G by... It's multiplied by M, so we're going to get rid of it by... Dividing, yeah. So it becomes the mass of the central body is V squared times R over G. Take the G over to the other side. Now the speed of this thing is 2.39 times 10 to the 4 meters per second. Don't forget to square that. Times R, which is 9.5 times 10 to the 6. Divided by big G, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Now let's do this one on our calculator. This one's icky too. I'm going to use some brackets here. I'm going to say 2.39 times 10 to the 4. And then I'm going to square that. I put brackets around the 2.39 times 10 to the 4 uh, just to make sure that the square is squaring the whole thing. Now, the reality is, if you enter this properly on your calculator with the, the proper exponent button, you could actually avoid those brackets. But just in case you enter it the other way, the way that I tell you not to enter scientific notation, um, we're going to put those brackets in there. Let's multiply that by 9.5 times 10 to the 6. And then let's divide that by 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. It gives us a value of 8.14 times 10 to the 24, 8.136 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. How many digits should I round this to? This was three digits. This is two digits. Final answer should be two digits, right? So we're going to make that 8.1 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. This, this is a uh, planet that has a mass that is slightly bigger, maybe 10%-ish bigger than the mass of the Earth. Uh, no, not 10%, but 30% bigger or so, right? Because the Earth was 5.97. Yeah, bigger than the Earth, right? Same order of magnitude, but bigger. Make sense? All right. You're going to work on the last worksheet of the unit as well, which is worksheet number 25. For the remainder of class.